individual to say everyone and then make an amendment because every rule has its exception. So the rule is a rule. Everyone has a portion of the world to come. And then there are exceptions. These guys don't. However, where there is an exception to the general rule, the Vishnu usually uses the expression tchus. Everyone except. Here, the Vishnu uses a different formula. Everyone has a portion in the world to come, and these are the ones who don't. That's what it is. What is the reason for that? Again, it should say, everyone has a portion in the world to come, except the following. The Vishnu says, everyone has a portion in the world to come, and these are the ones who don't. says, first of all, let's take a look at the possibility of everyone having a portion of the world to come. First of all, when we say world to come, we could mean one of two things. We're either referring to paradise, Gan Eden, which is where the soul goes when it leaves the body. It is sometimes called the world to come because it's at the end of life. Then there's another possible reference, and that is that when we say world to come, we're talking about this world on earth, but after Mashiach comes, which is literally the world to come, not another world. This world, but in a future time. When we say everyone has a portion of the world to come, we are not talking about heaven. We're talking about this world after Moshiach when everyone will be resurrected. Because in heaven, it is in fact true that not everyone is invited. Not everyone gets to go to heaven. And even if you do go to heaven, it's not the same for all people. You know, there's the front seat, box seat, bleachers, you know, you don't you don't all sit together because it depends on your righteousness and on your virtue and so on. The statement, all Jews have a portion in the world to come, cannot be referring to heaven. It's referring to this world at the time of the resurrection. What about those people who are not deserving and for whatever reason don't have a portion in the world to come? So, there is a possibility that even someone who is so sinful that they have lost their portion in the world to come can re regain it simply by repenting. If a person repents, if a person does tshuva, then just as other punishments are removed, are, are canceled, the punishment of not having a portion in the world to come is also removed. And he regains his portion in the world to come. What about a person who did not, during his lifetime, actually change his ways and become righteous? Rabbi writes that a person on his deathbed, who in his heart of hearts regrets his sins, is forgiven for all of his sins, that is considered repentance and tshuva, and the sins will never be mentioned. So he regains his portion in the world to come simply by regretting his sins, even though it's already the end of his life and he doesn't have a chance to, to live righteously, to do it. What about a person who did not actually change his ways and become righteous? And on his deathbed, he didn't regret. Is there any hope for such a person? The Hebrew says, we find in many places in the Talmud, that a child can do more for a father than the father can do for the child. Which means, when a father is in heaven and the son is on earth, obviously the father can do good things for the child, pull some strings, you know. But the child can do more for the, for the father than the father can do for the child. For example, the mitzvah
that, that the son does can be credited to the father. The father can affect the son through prayer. The, the, the father in heaven prays for his son. It can have a good effect on the son. Bring good things for the son. But the son, even if he doesn't pray for his father, but he does mitzvahs, and those mitzvahs can be credited to the father. Like, for example, giving charity. If he gives charity for his father, it certainly has a great effect. If he prays for his father,